Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, part two of our biomolecules unit, and we're looking at acids, bases, and buffers. So just a little background info. Um, as we know, uh, water is the most abundant molecule in uh, living organisms, and it's because of the unique properties of water that makes it so abundant and so important. So first of all, you need to know a little something about chemistry. Uh, water is a dipole molecule. Um, we also call it polar, which means it has an uneven sharing of electrons, and it leads to uh, differently charged ends of the molecule. So here's what it looks like. Because oxygen gains two electrons and uh, the hydrogens give up their electrons, it leads to a negative charge side and a positive charge side, which allows water to have the unique properties that it does. So you can pause that and get that jotted down. So the first property of water is due to its polarity. And uh, what you have here is that water has its positive side and our negative side. So does sodium chloride, sodium chloride. And what you see here is that the negative side of water is going to be attracted to the positive side of sodium. And the positive side of water is going to be attracted to the negative side of chlorine. And what happens is it essentially pulls it apart, sodium apart from chlorine, which allows it to dissolve. Okay, so you can write down that part and I would just draw a couple of the sodium and chlorine molecules of the water surrounding it so you can get an illustration of, of what's happening there. So this uh, hydrogen bonding is going to be the next thing that we're going to talk about and it's going to lead to a few different properties. Because of its polar ends, uh, there leads to an attraction of the positive hydrogen and the negatively charged atom uh, somewhere else. And so what I'm going to show here is water, which is why we're doing it. Uh, the negatively side charged oxygen will be attracted to the positively charged hydrogen, and it creates a force, an attractive force between them that's stronger than other uh, molecules that do not have hydrogen bonding. And this leads to uh, certain properties. So pause that, get that picture drawn. And the one property, the first property that we're going to talk about in terms of hydrogen bonding is, is ability to buffer or regulate the temperature. So since water has such a high specific heat, it's due to um, the hydrogen bonding between it. So the positive of one side and the negative of the other. What happens in terms of temperature is temperature will rise once the bonds are broken. But since water's bonds between them are so strong, it absorbs the heat and you don't see it translated as temperature. Okay, and that's important because certain things in our body need to have a certain temperature, 37 degrees Celsius, like enzymes in order to function properly. Okay, so you can pause that and get that picture uh, drawn, or you can refer back to your last one on hydrogen bonding. The third one is that it's cohesive and adhesive. Again, due to its hydrogen bonding properties, uh, water is going to be attracted from one to the next. And then it's also adhesive, which means it's able to be sticky to other objects. So you can write down the definition, and then I'm going to give you guys an example on the next slide here. So here's an example. Water is going to be sticky to each other, so that's cohesion. And then adhesion means it's going to be sticky to things like clay. You can also think of it as the meniscus. It's going to be sticky to the sides of the vessel but it's going to be sticky to each water molecule, which allows it to maintain its structure from one end to the next. And a practical example is that is, is in trees. You need to get that water from the roots all the way up to the highest branches, and it does that through adhesion and cohesion. Uh, there's little holes uh, that are open up in the leaves called stomata, and it allows water to evaporate. When that water evaporates, the water molecule that leaves is pulling on the water molecule below it, and also bracing itself against the vessel walls because of cohesion. So adhesion, sorry, because of adhesion. Adhesion is going to be holding against the side of the vessels, and cohesion is essentially allowing it to be pulled up to get all the way from the roots to the tops of the trees. Okay, so the last one is, uh, is that it's a good lubricant, which means be, due to its ability to be cohesive and dissolve and have a high heat capacity, it's able to surround things like food molecules, and make it so these food molecules, in this case it would be salt, uh, doesn't rub along your esophagus and become uncomfortable. And what it does is it creates this like almost protective barrier around that food substance. So you can write that one down there and draw the picture. Okay, so moving on from water and into acids and bases, uh, essentially what an acid is, is it when it is dissociated or when it touches water, it releases a hydrogen ion. 
And what that re refers to is, well, here's the example here, hydrochloric acid uh, breaks down to H plus and Cl minus. So the pH is less than 7. So for an example of pH, uh, pH of the stomach is about 2.5, 2 to 2.5, and that's because uh, the enzymes that work in the stomach need a, a low pH, and so they work optimally in, in that environment. Okay. However, if the pH is too low, it can create acidosis. Uh, this will be more related to things like the blood, where it has to be, have a specific pH from 7.35 to 7.45. And if acidosis does happen, um, it can create anything from headaches to confusion, uh, sleepiness, dysfunction of the uh, cerebrum, which can also lead to a coma and even death. A base is the opposite, so it's going to release hydroxide ions, OH ions, when it's added to water. Uh, so sodium hydroxide breaks down into sodium ions and hydroxide ions, and this is where the pH is going to be above 7. So the example I was going to show here again is in blood. That needs to be the pH of the blood. It's slightly basic, it's called. And if it gets too high, it leads to something called alkalosis, which would have symptoms like weak uh, muscles, pain, cramps, uh, spasms, and it's due to uh, low potassium levels. So how do we keep those pH levels in the optimal working position? Uh, something called homeostasis is what we're trying to obtain in our body every day, which essentially means make, maintain equilibrium. So not get too hot, not get too cold, not to get um, too much blood sugar, not too low. Uh, and in terms of pH, we want to keep it in between 7.35 and 7.45 maximum. And if we don't, uh, those disorders can happen. So what we want to do is have something called a buffer and what it does is it's a chemical that's able to release or pick up H pluses or OH to keep that pH level optimal. The example that we have in our body is bicarbonate HCO3 minus and what it's able to do is either pick up or release H pluses to maintain that pH of the blood and it looks like this. So here's our bicarbonate. If it's getting too acidic, so too many H pluses, it can bind to the H plus and create carbonic acid. If it's getting too basic, so um, too little H pluses, it can break down and release an H plus and now it forms a carbonate ion. Okay? So if anything's confusing in this video, which I'm sure there probably is a few things, we'll be taking this up in class, but uh, have yourselves a wonderful night.